Today, I'm going to be showing you how we restore rust on our old Land Cruiser, including cutting into the car, fabricating sheet metal, and finally welding this beast back together. Now, there are a fair few rusty bits on the car, but I'm going to run you through the process of this small hole with a bit of a challenging curve to it. This rust hole is located right here in the driver's door sill. Before we get started, I'm not going to pretend like I know what I'm doing, but it works for me as just a home job and it doesn't look that bad. So follow this advice at your own risk. Also, be sure to subscribe. Every person that comes along in this journey motivates us more and more. So first step is grabbing the angle grinder and checking out how bad the rust is. I use a gentle flap disc, but a wire wheel works all right too. So we're really just trying to suss what's still good metal and what the rust has destroyed. There's a lot of dimpling around where the rust has gone all the way through, um, but the metal still seems pretty strong, so that should be okay. While we're at it, we might as well clean up this little hole on the side as well. So now I can see how much needs replacing pretty clearly. I'm just going to mock up some replacement panels out of this card paper that I've got lying around. You can see just by pressing it into shape and gradually cutting, it's coming together. As a general rule, if you can't make it out of cardboard, you definitely can't make it out of metal. Alright, so now that top piece is looking pretty good, fairly simple shape bit of curve to it and a little worry over this edge where we get pretty close to our hole um, and I'm not very keen on recreating this sort of edge so we'll just sit it sort of there so I've just done the same sort of thing here just a little piece of cardboard that pretty perfectly covers up that hole uh, with a little margin and just being safe around there so now we've got our two pieces the perfect cutout cardboard and our 0.9 mil galvanized steel. We're ready to trace them and cut out the inside. This way I've got the exact shape I need accommodating for any curves or anything like that. Now once that's traced, I can grab the grinder and really carefully cut out our pieces. If I stay within the texture lines, we won't have to adjust the pieces much when we go back to the car. So here are our two initial cuts, pretty simple pieces, but they should match our templates pretty well. Next we clamp our piece in the vise and gently work it into shape with a typical household hammer. There are a thousand ways to do this with proper tools and all sorts of stuff like that, but I've got a vise and I've got a normal hammer, so it works for me. So just like that with those two easy hits, you can see it's already starting to take shape. Now while it's not exactly perfect yet, and we could do with a little bit more curvature in the middle. It's pretty good for just two hits with a hammer. So there we are. That's looking pretty good in place there. I've also just noticed here, there seems to be a bit more rust than I expected, or than I initially saw. So of course we're gonna have to make up a new panel for the side piece, uh, unfortunately, but sometimes that's just the way things go. And there you have it, our new piece. It's pretty well up against there. Might just need a quick hit with the hammer along there to give it that slight, very slight curve that this piece has. And here's our new piece. It fits up pretty well just on there. Once you're pretty happy with your rust cut and it lines up well like this, you can mark out where you're gonna cut on the car just by tracing with a texter. On the last repair I did, I cut the hole first and then tried to make a replacement piece to it. And that was just heaps, heaps harder than it is to make your piece and cut your hole to your piece. All right, let's do the side. And there you go. So we are just gonna be looking to cut the inside line of that texture all the way around. And the new plate should just fit in pretty well there. Let's get it cutting. I've switched to the Dremel for this from an angle grinder because it's just a little bit more precise. Though having said that, these are wildly underpowered and take ages to cut through even this really, really thin sheet metal. So they do annoy me a bit, but I haven't found tiny discs for my grinder yet. That's our first cut done. See all that rust on the back there and the little hole. That's looking a lot better. Can also see a whole bunch of stuff that needs cleaning up in here, but we might as well cut our other piece first. Oh. 
and that's your second piece a little bit munted but yeah so if we look in here you can just see how utterly rusty it is underneath there I mean this hole is so round it must be from factory but yeah not too not too chuffed about the rest so I'm gonna grab some rust remover and have a go at this with the screwdriver um, just to clean up the inside as much as possible then we can finish off welding these plates in So now I've got some rust remover. This stuff annoys me because you have to paint it on and then you have to aggravate the rust and then you have to wipe it off. Whereas some other rust remover as I've had, you just put it on and leave it, does the job. But, oh well, I don't know. This is what was available at the time. Since access to the back of the pieces is limited, I'm just gonna hit them with some quick steel primer so that they don't rust from behind. While we wait for them to dry, let's just prep our work area so we're ready to weld. So I've got a grinding disc on the Dremel and I'm just gonna lightly touch all of our edges to create a sort of V in. And that should let the weld sit nice and tight just on top of that V and hold pretty strong. Then we can do the same thing to our pieces. Just lightly touch the edge and create a bit of a V. Go, see that little V there, painted on that side. Have you ever felt? Are you listening? Damn. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. So since our replacement piece is galvanized, when you weld, a little bit of this galve will come off uh, as zinc fumes. And you really don't want to inhale them because it, it gives you a sort of flu. So I got this mask that should prevent that. And I also drank a glass of milk, uh, which is supposed to fill your body up so you can't absorb any heavy metals. So I'm a complete novice welder. Um, so this probably won't look good, but as long as it holds together, I'll be pretty happy. So now I think we've completely saturated the surface with welds. Let's grind it back and then see what holes we have left to fill. Just, just blow a hole straight through there. So just as I was finishing this piece off, I've unfortunately blown two pretty sizable holes in our sheet metal. Um, one all the way over here and another one on that sort of bridging bit that I really didn't want to have to repair. That's a bit unfortunate, but probably stems from me having no idea what I'm doing. I think I'll gradually just be able to build weld up around this hole and hopefully just grind that flat. But this one uh, looks a bit more difficult. So I think to, to solve this one, I'm gonna put in the new plate and just begin to weld that in and then build off there so it drips down hopefully. So I discovered just a bit more rust uh, underneath our workpiece and decided I'm just going to replace that too while we're at it. Alright so it doesn't look super pretty. Um, but it does look better than what we started with and it is really bloody strong. So yeah, for not a whole lot of work and zero expertise, I reckon that's an all right rust repair. And even though it doesn't look perfect, before we paint it, I'll just hit it with a little bit of bog or filler um, over the top and it should come up a treat. Damn. Yeah. 